Hi guys, welcome to Fulton Street Beats. This is the Leo James do-it-yourself Rickenbacker style bass kit. And you'll notice that I say once in a while Rickenbacker. You'll notice once in a while I say Rickenbacker. And historically both are correct, just so you know. Nobody, you're not getting it wrong. Um, they change the way they pronounce the word in history. So it's... Um, not a big deal. You can say it either way, and you might catch me doing that once in a while. So anyhow, why one of these kits? Um, why not just get a real rig? Well, for those of us who like these kits, or even a Chinese knockoff, well, the answer is pretty obvious. It's price, right? I mean, we love the shape. We love the design because that's what the ricks are about, right? They're legendary. And you, some people love them or hate them. I love them. I love the sound. I love the tonal ability of a real Rick. But how does a do-it-yourself kit compare to that? Well, I guess if you're a hot-rotting guitar builder, like I am, when you're building something and you can upgrade components, you can make them sound pretty much any way you want. After all, the electronics are what does the work, contrary to popular belief. Um, now, feel and the aura of the bass or guitar or what have you is a whole different story. So how does this make me feel when I play it? Well, it makes me feel pretty good. I feel like I'm playing a rig. So let's talk about this kit. And is it worth it? And what did, exactly did I have to do to get it in its current state? Well, honestly, I didn't have to do much. I simply went to Amazon and I bought the kit for 199 bucks because, well, even if it didn't play well, I got a cool-looking wall hanger for the studio. But it surprised me because it plays really well. And it went together really well. So well, in fact, I didn't even have to solder anything. It's got a plug-and-play wiring harness. Now, looking at the components that it had, I didn't think it was going to sound great. I mean, how good can a $199... Rickenbacker clone sound. Well, that's where I was shocked and a little bit disbelief because it sounds great. Kind of sounds like a Rick, which is really strange. So I don't think that that is by design. I think that's some kind of odd fluke with the components that they chose to throw in in a cheap fashion, but they work together. So the pickup's not microphonic. So let's make that clear. They're decent, and they're a decent weight. What brand are they exactly? I don't know. But it's wax pod, and up here by the by the uh, neck. Um, of course, we have the jazz-style pickup here, which sounds phenomenal. And when we get into our electronics and our pots, they're just CF dime-sized pots. Now, they're 500K pots, but they work well. There's no push-pull. There's no Rick push-pull, nothing like that. But they work well. So... A lot of differences from an actual Rick, but it plays well, and it plays like a Rick. And why is that? Well, most of that is because of the feel of it. And like I said, the feel is a big thing. Now, they have advertised this as being a swamp ash, and I've seen it even advertised sometimes as being a mahogany. It's neither one of those. Swamp ash is, it is very, very, it's a light wood. It's a light tone wood. And um, very soft, easy to screw into, easy to self-tap if you're trying to put screws in for a pick guard or what have you. This, I believe, and I am a custom drum builder, so I pretty I have a good idea of what woods are. And I believe this is walnut. And there's a few reasons that I believe that. Number one is the way it took the stain. Number two is the wood grain. Number three is the weight. This base body, just the body without the neck empty, is almost six pounds. Yes, it's soggy. Completed weight is over 11 pounds with this base. Over 11 pounds for this base. So it's Rick weight. So they're on par there. And a lot of times these companies don't know what they're selling. They just throw wood and they don't know where they're sourcing or what they're getting. So it makes sense. Now it's made up on the back. You'll notice that it's made up of a, of a few pieces. Um, so they're sandwiched together. But it is a hard wood. So if you're thinking about self-tapping into this when you're building it to put any covers on or what have you or changing anything, drill first or you will break your screws. 
Now, did I run into any issues with this base? Well, yes, one kind of major issue, but it was an easy fix. A major issue that was an easy fix. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you watch my unboxing video, you'll notice that when I took this apart, I found a crack inside of the cavity cover that went right through to the other side. Now, it wasn't a crack due to shipping or anything like that. It's, an, it's actually very common with walnut. And it, 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 it went right through to the other side, and it was a split in the seam of the wood grain. Very common to walnut because it's such a hard wood. And moisture and temperature changes can play hell with walnut. I've seen it many times. So that's what leads me to believe that this is an actual walnut. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. So we fixed that, and I got a couple videos out on how I fixed that seam. Pretty easy to fix, and that's why I said both bad, but easy fix. So what about the neck? The neck is maple, and it does have a scarf joint. It is a very slim neck. It's a very fast neck. It went into the pocket precisely, and very easy to set up with a couple, well, Maybe a quarter turn of the truss rod cover, actually, of the, of the truss rod. Um, you had to turn it a little bit, put a bow in it, according to the strings we're running. And these are still factory strings, although I do have some flat wounds on order, which we'll get to in a second. So I finished this in, in a black to start, black stain to fill the grain in here and um, give it a dark appearance. It's followed by an espresso. I two-toned it. It is a butcher block style finish, if you will. And um, of course, the maple takes the stain a little bit different. So the espresso up top is a little bit different than what it is here. That's just because the way maple takes stain. I did do a Rickenbacker truss rod cover, which is an aftermarket cover and um, not an actual Rick cover. And that's because, well, I had to dremel out to make it fit these tuners because these tuners are a bit more inboard um, than an actual Rick. And, of course, it does have a different shape headstock, which is very cool still. Um, open gear, gear tuners, as you can see. And there's the, how that looks. Um, and they work great. So what's my point of this video? The point of this video is this base went together very, very well, very fast. This base was completed in less than a day, easily less than a day. And I'm talking the finish, everything. And that's because it's pre-wired. It's even pre-wired. Didn't have to do any soldering. There's no push-pull or anything fancy, but like I said. But what about the future of this base? Well, I've been playing this base quite a bit and um, getting the feel for it because I'm used to the fretless over here. So going back to frets is a, is, is a bit different. But at the same time, a pretty healthy transition because it keeps you in check. So this has a Music Man style bridge. I just ordered a Rick bridge for it. So we're going to put that on. Not that this doesn't hold tune. Not that it doesn't work great in the actions. The action's perfect. It's just that I'm going for that traditional Rick style because, well, why did I build it? Because I like the looks of Rick's, but I don't want to spend the money. So we're going to change that. I'm going to change this pickup. And this is on order. Now this is on order out of China. So it's going to take a little bit to a toaster style pickup. And it's supposed to have the same specs as Rick. So we'll see when that comes. I also have a pickup cover for here come, coming. You guys probably saw the last video. It does, did come with a cover. But it's more of a um, it's more of a P-Base style cover. It actually is a P-Base style cover. And that's a no-no. I like that big that big uh, rectangular blocky look and uh, of a Rick. So Doing some research, I found out that the Rickenbacker covers are plastic. And then when you look at the prices of them, wow, they're $100, $200 for a cover. That's right. That's not a pickup. That's the cover. Now, you can get the whole pickup assembly, which you'll have to do some different routing for, for around five, dollars $600. So that's not going to happen because this pickup sounds great. Um, but I do want the cover. Found one for 100 bucks. That is metal from a company that makes them out of metal. And you get a cheap pickup with it, which we won't be using because, like I said, this one sounds so good. So I'm using this for the cover. It will be a metal cover. And that's just because it's the route I wanted to go. 
So it's worth upgrading. It really is. And will I ever get the money out of it that I put into it? Hell no. But it's for me and it's for the studio and it puts a smile on my face. And that's at the end of the day is why we do things like this, why we hot rod guitars, why we take the time and do things like this and have fun and make things the way we want. Now, would I love an actual Rickenbacker? Of course I would. But this has given me the feel and a really good sound already for a fraction of the price. I mean a fraction of the price. And that's what it's about. Well, at the same time, Ricks sound amazing. Nothing beats a Rick in my mind. But I can come close because it's cool. And you know what? I built it. I can say I did it myself. And you can build one and say you did it yourself. And to give an idea, I got a buddy of mine who's a great bass player. And uh, he's got a Rick. And he's played this. And he loves it. It's like it plays just like my bass. I can't believe the sounds that are coming out of it. I said, I know, Colin. It's awesome. So this is what you get for 199 bucks. Now, like I said, I do have the truss rod cover um, on here. That's not an actual Rick. The actual Rick truss rod covers are astronomically priced. This one was about 25 bucks, but it looks great. Um, upgrades. Another one I'm going to do is the tuning machines. These ones work great. They look great, but I can get Rick ones for 90 bucks. I'm going to do it. So I'm going to have a lot of money into this base. We figured 90, and I've got 75 for the flat ones, and we got another 100 and whatever for the bridge. And then we have another a toaster pickup here that was around $110. And then we have the cover, and it comes with a pickup. That's about 100 that I paid for that. And maybe later on we'll do some Rick wiring. I don't know. But my fear is that I'm going to change things, and it's going to sound worse, and mount me worse. I mean, less than what it sounds now, because it sounds really good right now. So we're going to go over here to my little recording area, or my little, my little production area. And uh, it's going to be a, right now for you guys, about five hours for me, because I got some work to do around here. And um, I'm just going to go over, and I'm going to throw on a backing track, and I got one in my DAW that I found last night before I went to bed. And I've never played to it. And we're, I'm just going to horse around whatever, give you some actual sounds of what this sounds like with zero production. Just raw bass. I'm going to be running through a Purple Wind amp. It's a very clean amplifier. It's actually a guitar amp. Um, it's 5 watts. It's a very, very clean though. When you turn the bass up, it sounds well, better than my bass amp. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play through that very clean so you guys can hear how good this thing thumps. And, and tell me what you think. Now, I'm not the best bass player in the world. And I'm going to be doing some experimenting and missing notes. So just bear with me. But I'm going to play a little bit. And uh, I like to keep it real here at Fulton Street Beats and bring you guys along for the ride. So you know there's no fluff. It is what it is. And if you guys haven't checked out the unboxing of this and the build of this, go ahead and do so. I'll leave a link at the end of this video. Without any further ado, let's get over there and hear this thing raw, just bass sound, zero effects, what you're going to get out of the box with one of these Leo James $199 do-it-yourself kits from Amazon.